good morning uh, last class uh, we started the discussion on joule kelvin expansion or joule kelvin effect just we started the discussion let us continue it that what is a joule kelvin expansion joule kelvin expansion is like that if there is a constant area pi for example it is like this a fluid flows in this direction and if we have in between a valve which restricts the flow by closing the flow area by providing restricted passage that means if the valve is completely closed there is no passage for the flow to take place and if the valve is gradually open the flow commences through restricted passages so that by various opening of the valve we can create various flow passages across this through which the fluid flow takes place by which we can control the flow at different levels. So, in this situation if we just recognize some section 1 upstream to this valve which is undisturbed by this valve and if we measure both the pressure this is the pressure P 1 section 1 and the temperature T 1 and if we recognize another downstream section far from the valve which is undisturbed section when the fluid flow has become again steady and uniform rather uniform and if we measure both the pressure and let this section is 1 dash P 1 dash and temperature T 1 dash which we recognize that if there is no heat transfer heat is not allowed to flow that means the entire pipe is insulated along with the valve then this situation in this situations we have recognized experimentally that P 1 dash is always less than P 1 that is pressure is reduced while flowing through because of the friction flowing through the restricted area of flow provided by the valve. But about T 1 dash let us define it with T 1, T 1 dash may be less than T 1 may be greater than T 1 depending upon the situation this we will discuss today. Now this process is known as throttling process in this is a practical terminology throttling process the fluid is throttled that means it is coming with some high pressure it is throttled to a lower pressure P 1 dash. So, while throttling the fluid the entire flow rate is set to a reduced value. So, by setting the valve at different positions we can go on reducing the flow rate when the valve is fully closed no flow valve is wide open the full flow. So, that at various level we can set the flow by regulating the valve this is one of the very practical uh, way of controlling the flow there are different types of valves which you will come across in practice there is nothing much to understand fluid flow but thing is that how to analyze this process thermodynamically now if we consider a control volume comprising this 1 and 1 dash section then we see from thermodynamic point of view that this is a control volume which do not does not have any heat and work interaction with the surrounding. So, if you write the steady flow energy equations then the enthalpy plus the kinetic and potential energy that section 1 must be equal to those quantities at 1 dash. But the kinetic energy at 1 and 1 dash are the same since the cross sectional area is the same flow rate is the same. So, therefore, per unit mass basis we can write that the specific enthalpies remain the same at the two sections 1 and 1 dash. In last class I designated uh, the section downstream by 2 now I designate it by 1 dash. So, therefore, we see this is an isenthalpic process. So, therefore, throttling process is an isenthalpic process. That means the process where the final and uh, initial and final enthalpy are same, but this is an irreversible process. Why? This is because of friction. Until and unless there is friction, the pressure cannot be lower than this. If this could have been an inviscid flow, if you allow an inviscid flow to flow through a restricted passage area, then what will happen? There will be no change in pressure because if you write the Bernoulli's equation across these two sections as we have read in fluid mechanics, the pressure at these two points will be same. But here what happens if you write the Bernoulli's equation even if the velocities are same, pressures are not same which is the known as head loss that means the energy loss that means the sum of the pressure energy it's a part of mechanical energy is being converted into intermolecular energy which we call as loss that means loss of mechanical energy as such energy cannot be lost that is why the loss of energy which we uh, usually tail in Bernoulli's equation is the loss of mechanical energy a part of the uh, mechanical energy here the pressure energy is being converted loss means it being converted from mechanical the loss from the account 
the mechanical energy is goes to the intermolecular energy, which raises the temperature of the fluid. It may or may not, in this case, may or may not, but it increases the intermolecular energy of the fluid. Now, thing is that, therefore, it is the friction of the fluid by virtue of which there is a difference in pressure. That means the pressure is reduced at the downstream from that of the uh, upstream. So, therefore, this is a process from 1 to 1 dash executed by an open system or a steady or a flow process, okay, which is highly irreversible in nature. Friction is the friction is the dominating factor in reducing the pressure. So, therefore, it is an isenthalpic process means initial and final enthalpies are same, but it is an irreversible process. Now, if you do an experiment like this that fix this quantity P1, T1, so that H1 is fixed because H1 is a function of P1, T1. If we fix P1, T1, then H1 is fixed. Now, if we set the valves at different positions, that means throttle the fluid at different levels, so that the we arrive at different pressures and temperatures at the outlet. So, we can do this experiment. So, we get a pair of points like P double dash, T double dash, P triple dash, these are all outlet pair of pressure and temperatures at outlet, which we get after throttling at different valve settings. Okay, But because of this fact, the enthalpy has to remain same from the steady flow energy equation applied to this control volume. We can tell that all the enthalpies which correspond to this pressure that let these enthalpies are H double dash, H triple dash, but they all become equals to H. That means, we can generate equal enthalpy state points. And if we draw this in a curve or a plane T P plane, we can get a curve which represents the locus of constant enthalpy. So, this curve look like this, this curve look like this. Actually, this is not the curve or the line representing this process because this is an irreversible process, throttling is an irreversible process. So, this curve is not the representation of the process as you know an irreversible process can never be described or shown in a thermodynamic coordinate diagram. So, it is very important to note in this context that this is a curve showing a constant enthalpy H1, constant enthalpy line that is locus of the constant enthalpy points. That means, if we join the points, we will get this curve. One of the points corresponds to P1, T1, that is the inlet for example. We see that we have a maximum and if we repeat the experiment in this way that we now change this inlet conditions from some other value, let P2, T2 corresponding to another enthalpy H2 and we set the valves at different levels to generate different other points that means P2 dash, T2 dash, P2 double dash, T2 double dash. Then we will be able to generate state points of enthalpy which equals to H2 which is set by the fixed values of the inlet state point. Then we can generate another curve. This way we can generate different families of curves of constant enthalpies in TP diagram. So, if we do so, we will come across such a curve. We will come across, let me draw this, then I will explain this. We will come across, we will come across such a curve. Sorry, this should be also, this is should be also. This should be also like this. We should come across such a curve. These are the families of curves. These are the families of curves. Now, you see that as we have, we already noted, let us do like this. Okay. I will explain these things. Let me draw the diagram. This is the family of curves we obtain. Now, what are these things? Now, this is Tp. Now, these are all constant enthalpy curve, let H1, H2, H3, they are set. That means, all the points H5, H6, these are constant enthalpy curve. That means, all the points on this curve represents same enthalpy. Now, one interesting, there are different interesting features. Now, we will study. These points are all constant. That means, we just join 
these experimental points, the way we draw the experimental curve. I am sorry, these lines also will be dotted, this part of the line. Now, there are few interesting points. Now, any curve if you follow at any constant enthalpy curve, we see there is a maximum and then it is falling. That means, there is a maximum on the curve. So, some part of the curve, the slope is positive and some part of the curve, the slope is negative. That means, this del t del p, if we define this slope is del t del p, slope is positive on some part, the curve has a maximum and the slope is negative. This way this goes and another interesting fact we see, as we go on increasing the temperature, the maximum point shifts towards the right, towards this increasing p value. Then again it shifts towards the left and if we join these maximum points, the maximum of these points which are given by del t del p 0, that means all these points corresponds to del t del p, these points corresponds to del t del p at constant h, constant h is 0. That means, if we join the maximum of all these constant enthalpy curves in T p plane, that means, if we join the del p del p a 0 point, we get a locus as shown by this red dotted line, which is known as inversion curve, inversion curve, inversion curve. Now, you see our main question was that this is our experimental findings. Whatever we have generated that we have done the experiments in the laboratory as an worker, as an as a worker and we plot the data. Now, we will explain these things. This is the data generated from the laboratory experiments. Now, what we see that each and every curve has a maximum which goes on shifting in the right directions in TP plane and again on the left direction. And if we join, we will see that the mac locus of this maximum point del T del P at constant h is 0 is like that at some point it cuts on T s axis here and here. So, therefore, we can see that from this point onwards the curve has only negative slope. Now, you see when the curve has a positive slope, they are only the throttling process can reduce the temperature. What is throttling process? The pressure has to be reduced. Now, you see in the positive part of the slope, positive slope part of the curve, what is the value of del T del P? Positive. That means, if you decrease the pressure, temperature will be decreased. So, therefore, this positive slope part of the curve represents always a cooling effect, cooling region. That means, if you start at any point here and throttle, that means, your starting point is here and you throttle up to this. So, there will be always a cooling, you see. So, this region is the cooling region, cooling region. Throttling means, if you start at initial point, while you throttle, you have to move in a direction where the pressure is reduced. Well, so in the if you lie on the if your initial point initial state lies on this positive slope part, then if you throttle that means if you go along the direction where pressure is reduced always temperature will be reduced because this part of the curve shows a positive value of del T del P at constant h. This is clear. So, therefore, it is a cooling region, but if your initial point is somewhere here or here and if you go along this line in a direction where pressure is reduced, your temperature will be increased because this part of this curve is having a negative del T del P at constant h, negative slope. That means, when the pressure is reduced, temperature is increased. So, this part is the heating region, okay. This part is the heating region. That means, this part I can write as the heating region and it is the inversion point, inversion curve this is known as inversion curve which demarcates the cooling and heating region. Now, let us analyze few other things interesting. Now, if you have to have a maximum cooling effect due to throttling, then your initial point should be at the top point that means the maximum point lie on the inversion curve. For example, at this enthalpy if you start at this point and throttle up to this point, you get a cooling of this much, this much temperature drop. But if your point is at the inversion point and if you have to throttle up to this point, then you get the maximum cooling. To have the maximum cooling, you have to have this initial state point at the point of del T del P at constant H 0, that means at the inversion curve point. But now the question is there that is it so that if the initial point, for example, here, the initial point, some initial point I consider at this enthalpy line is in the heating region, there will be no cooling that we cannot tell. That is because that depends upon the extent up to which you can throttle. That means, if you throttle up to a pressure of this point 
up to a this pressure that means you arrive at this point so there is a heating but if you throttle up to this pressure i draw a horizontal line you understand and if you throttle up to this pressure there will be neither cooling nor heating same temperature but if you throttle up to this point so from this from this pressure to this pressure that means you go along this part and this come here so there this temperature is lower than this temperature that means if your initial point is on the negative slope part in the heating region part of the car you cannot tell conclusively there will be no cooling usually there is no cooling that depends upon the level of throttling that means you can th if you throttle to a very low pressure so that this point can come up to this part of this car in such a way that there is a drop in temperature that is possible also okay but usually it is not so usually this much throttle is not done if the throttling is done up to some pressure here up to some pressure or here that means if you draw a horizontal line so this is the pressure if this is the starting point below which if you throttle then only you will get the cooling or if you throttle up to this pressure or to a pressure higher than this pressure higher than this pressure then you will never get cooling but if your initial point lies in the positive slope part of the car you will always get cooling effect and the cooling effect is maximum if your initial point is on the inversion curve this point is clear yes, heating and cooling another interesting thing is that if the this point is known as t max this point is known as maximum inversion temperature maximum inversion maximum inversion temperature similarly where it cuts is known as minimum inversion temperature minimum inversion minimum inversion temperature okay now here you see that from the type of the curves above the maximum inversion temperature the curve is having only negative slope so there is no way cooling possible similarly below the maximum inversion temperature also that means if your initial state always corresponds to such a temperature which is more than the maximum inversion temperature so your point has to be in either of this curve like that anywhere here so that you can never have a throttling effect that means if your initial point is somewhere here so throttling will not be done that means throttling cannot be made cooling cannot be made with throttling that means these points will be always on the negative slope of the curve there is no positive slope part of this curve so this is another interesting point of this curve now here one practical thing i tell you uh, before that uh, let me discuss uh, the fact uh, there some one uh, uh, what is called that mathematical expression for this del t del p at h now this del t del p at h that the slope of the isenthalpic curve is known as joule thomson coefficient or joule kelvin sometimes i tell thomson thomson and kelvin is the same man joule kelvin is joule kelvin sorry joule kelvin coefficient joule kelvin coefficient mu j is given by del t del p at h this is known as joule kelvin so this is zero on the inversion point so i want to have an expression of this joule kelvin coefficient in terms of other properties how it is done we write the equation per unit mass basis dh is tds plus vdp this equation you know the basic property relation <laughs> dh is tds plus vdp if any problem you ask me is there any problem is there any question dh is tds plus vdp now if you recollect the first tds equation second tds equation which expresses tds in terms of dp and dt what is this expression cp small cp per unit mass basis dtt if you see your earlier class notes minus this is t into del v del t small v specific volume at constant p dp plus vdp that means i can write this as cp dt plus we can write this way v minus t del v del t at p into dp i can write this thing that is dh this expression now at constant h dh is zero 
and we can get from this equation that del t del p therefore, at constant h is 1 by C p into V minus t into del V del t at constant p. So, therefore, this is one of the very useful expressions that means, this is mu j del t del p that means, del t del p is mu j I should write mu j is equal to del t del p at constant h is equal to. So, therefore, this is a very useful expression for the Joule Kelvin coefficient clear yes, any question please ask me mu j is del t del p h. Now, here one yes please one very important application comes out if now we consider a system which obeys the ideal gas equations that means for ideal gas let us see what happens for ideal gas what is the value of Joule Kelvin coefficient. Do you know what is the value of Joule Kelvin coefficient for an ideal gas? 0. How do you get it? For an ideal gas the equation of state is P V is equal to R T. V is the specific volume, R is the characteristic gas constant. So, therefore, if you equate this quantity T del V del T P, V minus T del V del T P, this will become 0. So, for an ideal gas therefore, mu J is equal to del T del P at h is equal to 0, which means that at constant enthalpy there is no change in the temperature with pressure. That means, if enthalpy remains constant, temperature remains constant. That is one corollary, one of the corollaries of the ideal gas laws, which will be again told afterwards that enthalpy is a function of temperature. That means, when enthalpy remains same, it is a function of temperature only. That means, when enthalpy remains same, temperature also remains same. That means, isenthalpic process is equals to isothermal process. That means, the change in temperature with pressure is 0 if the enthalpy remains the same. That means, you cannot change the temperature by when by throttling if the enthalpy remains constant. Throttling means the constant enthalpy process. So, therefore, for an ideal gas mu j is 0. So, therefore, if a gas is perfectly ideal which is an hypothesis then the gas can never be cooled by making a Joule Kelvin expansion or Joule Thomson expansion. Now, here after this I again come back that a gas can be cooled. Now, Joule Kelvin expansion is one of the methods by which a gas is cooled. So, if you look into this curve you see that if a gas because the non idealities of a gas that means no gas is an ideal gas is a clue to its cooling because when the gas is non ideal then only Joule Thomson effects will have a cooling effect because del T del P at constant H is not 0, but in an ideal gas the hypothesis is equal to 0. So, therefore, all gases are non ideal. So, there is a value del T del P at H non 0. So, cooling can be made, but now we have to be particular the which region of the car the initial state point should be there. So, that we get a cooling effect. So, that will be decided by this curve that the initial state point should be on the left of this inversion point that inversion curve that means, this is the inversion point where the slope is 0. So, on the left side of the inversion point that means, the initial state should lie on the positive slope part of the isenthalpic curve. Again one has to be very careful whether the temperature initial temperature is below the maximum inversion temperature or not. If it is not so then you can never get it cooled by Joule Thomson expansion and typical example is hydrogen whose maximum inversion temperature is 204 K. Usually the maximum inversion temperatures are very high for most of the gases. So, therefore, we can choose the state the corresponding pressure so that we can have a cooling effect, but unfortunately hydrogen the maximum inversion temperature is 204 K. So, if you have a compressed hydrogen gas even at the ambient temperature of 273 K or even more then its temperature is more than the maximum inversion temperature it can never be cooled. So, therefore, always when hydrogen is cooled by Joule Thomson's or Joule Kelvin expansion the basic requirement is what is a primary cooling by some other coolant not by expansion to reduce this temperature from the existing temperature down to a temperature below to 204 K which is the maximum inversion temperature. For uh, nitrogen yes I give you the value for nitrogen 60 for nitrogen this temperature is 607 K. For air as you know we will discuss afterwards though air is not a single component system, but air behaves as a pure substance. Pure substance means 
is almost equivalent to a single component system which is homogeneous in its composition. So, that is why we consider air as, as if a single component system pure substance this behavior is almost like a pure substance. So, that air is a pure substance and it is maximum inversion temperature. So, for air nitrogen there are other gas carbon dioxide I exactly cannot recall it is like 1250 K. So, all of them you see the maximum inversion temperature pretty high that means if you compress the gas at some high pressure, but its temperature is <coughs> below that, then if you cool it, then you can make a cooling effect. What is done in practice? I am telling you an idea. You compress the gas at some high pressure, then the gas will be compressed and because of its increase in pressure, what happens? The temperature will increase. Now, if you cool the gas by a coolant at constant pressure, keeping the pressure same, that means the gas temperature comes down to a uh, to the initial value, for example, the ambient temperature. Then if you throttle the gas, that means expand the gas, reduce its pressure from higher one to a lower one, you get a cooling effect. That means the temperature goes below that of the ambient. You understand my point? But unfortunately, hydrogen, you cannot do it. Hydrogen, even if you compress it, but if you cool, you have to cool down to a temperature below 204, so that the cooling will be effective. That means you will have to pre-cool it such a way that below the ambient temperature it should come. You understand? Otherwise, hydrogen gas cannot be cooled by Joule Kelvin or Joule Thomson expansion until and unless it is pre-cooled to a degree where its temperature comes below the inversion temperature. This is one very important practical information. This is all about Joule Kelvin or Joule Thomson expansion. So, what we learn that in a throttling process, pressure is reduced definitely because of the friction but temperature may or may not reduce, may increase, may reduce. But what is the physical? Immediately if you tell the people will ask why. The physical concept is there that there are two countervailing effects. One is that because of the friction pressure is being reduced, that means a part of the pressure energy is converted to intermolecular energy whose effect is to increase the temperature of the fluid as if you are rotating a paddle wheel or impeller in a fluid. For example, in a liquid this temperature will increase, but at the same time because of the expansion the reduction in pressure, there will be a reduction in temperature depending upon its equation of state. These two countervailing effects will decide whether the temperature will increase or decrease and that depends upon the inversion point of a particular system. Okay? So, this is all about the Joule Kelvin effect. Now, I will start a new chapter, properties of pure substances. properties of pure substances and we first do the phase diagrams which is very important phase diagrams. Now, what is a pure substance? Pure substance is a substance usually by pure substance very first line we understand that is a single component substance, but it is not always true that single component substance is a pure substance very first line is a single component substance you understand, but what is that? But not, not always a single component substance is a pure substance. Pure substance is a substance which is homogeneous in its chemical composition throughout its mass. That is known as a pure substance. For example, air is a pure substance because air's composition is homogeneous throughout a mass. That means we can represent any mass or any represent we can uh, describe a system by any representative mass which has the same composition of its constituents. Then also it is a pure substance. Okay? Now, let us consider a pure substance first, the properties of pure substance, we will follow the idea, we will cover the ideal gas, mixture of ideal gases, all are pure substance afterwards, but before that we deal with the phase diagram of a pure substance. Let us consider a pure component first, pure component, single component and how to draw the phase diagram. You know there are three neutral phases of a substance, solid, liquid and gases. As we go on heating from the solid state, it first comes to a saturated state with increasing temperature, it absorbs the sensible heat. These are the common information at basic uh, primary school level, I am recapitulating it. It gains heat and it increases the temperature, which is the representation of the molecular kinetic energy. So, molecular disorderness increases along with that entropy increases. As you know, heating process entropy increases and it comes to a stage depending upon the pressure, that stage is represented by the temperature when it melts at changes its phase from solid to liquid at the constant temperature. If the pressure is maintained constant, temperature will also be maintained constant and until and unless the entire solid melts to liquid, the temperature remains constant, but it takes heat, that heat is known as latent heat. Then again, a sensible heating is there where the liquid phase is heated, it absorbs the heat and then what happens? Its temperature increases. 
that means the molecular kinetic energy increases. Again, it comes to a point when the liquid is converted into vapor and that point is represented by a temperature corresponding to a pressure. This we will be discussing. These are known as saturation states. Then they absorb the latent heat required for converting the entire amount of liquid to the vapor. Then again, if it absorbs it, it goes on increasing its temperature. As you go on heating it, the temperature will go on increasing, which increases the intermolecular energy or the kinetic energy of the molecules. And when it reaches the gas state, if you go on increasing the go on uh, supplying the heat, temperature will go on increasing. So, there will be no other change of phase in its neutral position until and unless the gases are ionized and goes to the plasma state, which is beyond the scope of this course. So, therefore, a neutrally there are three states solid, liquid and gases. How do you represent the thermodynamic properties of a pure component when they undergo such phase changes? Now, let us see that. Let us first consider a PV diagram. All now, one thing I tell you here as a teacher, you do not need to draw all the diagram. By doing so, I am telling you lose some interest in studying these things in your following the lecture and at the same time, this is my suggestion to other teachers also and to me also, a teacher should not do all the diagrams so meticulously without speaking much or telling, describing much in drawing the phase diagram, all these things. I have come with some prepared diagram so that I lose uh, the explanation part of it. Why I am telling you this is because all these diagrams are available in all standard textbooks, you can consult here, but try to understand the theme here. So, if you are absorbed in all taking this phase diagram drawing, how to draw it, how a teacher draws that thing, then you are, your concentration will be mainly in drawing the diagram, not in understanding the thing, because these are the very simple diagrams and very popular diagrams, simple and popular which are available in books. So, let us understand this. Let us consider a specific volume and pressure. Let us consider this plane, specific volume and pressure and consider a certain mass of gas which we heat at a constant pressure. So, let us consider a constant, therefore, we consider a constant pressure line. Well, we consider a constant pressure line. Let us denote the constant pressure line by this. Let us consider even this pressure is one atmospheric pressure. It may be an one atmospheric pressure. P is equal to constant. Obviously, P is equal to constant in PV plane is a line horizontal. But parallel to V axis. Now, if we start at a solid state 1, if you give heat, then what will happen? Its specific volume will increase. Obviously, it gets that it heat is heated, its temperature is increased. So, it goes to a state 2. So long, now when you go to a state 2, state 2 is a state where the solid starts melting. Then while melting, again its specific volume increases except water is an exception. So, specific volume will increase and go to 3. So, 3 is a state point where the solid has been melted into liquid. Now, if you still go on giving heat, so liquid will go to another point 4 where the specific volume will increase because of the increase in temperature. Then 4 is a point where the liquid starts vaporizing, boiling to the vapor phase taking heat at constant temperature. This is not being manifested in PV diagram, but the specific volume increases. Abruptly, there is a cut when it com comes to a vapor. Why? There is such a gap because you know the specific volume of a vapor is much, much higher corresponding to the specific volume of the water. So, therefore, this is the heating process. This is the heating process. Then you go on increasing the temperature, go on more heat, increasing the temperature, supplying more heat, it will go to a 0.6 and onwards go to the superheated, much, much superheated vapor region. So, now if these experiments are carried out to designate or to uh, what I will tell to point uh, to find out these state points, to mark these state points at different pressures, we can do it at another pressure, we can do it at another pressure. So, that I want to find out this 1 dash, 2 dash, corresponding points 3 dash, 4 dash, 5 dash, they may be different so that I can generate the same points on different constant pressure lines. And if we do so, what I will get you see here. Now, if we do so, what I will get? Now, you see 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, here is this liquid solid state. Now, 2 is a point where solid starts melting and 3 is a point when entire solid has been melted. So, therefore, this is the region which is the mixture of solid plus 
liquid okay i have not written that solid so this is solid plus liquid this is liquid this is liquid plus vapor oh it is written solid so solid plus liquid then from 3 to 4 is the sensible heating of the liquid then from 4 to 5 is the vaporization okay there is an enormous change in the specific volume then 6 gas so if you consider this in case of a water is a special case then 1 to 2 then 2 to 3 there is a reduction in the volume so that 3 point comes here then again 3 to 4 and 4 to 5 so therefore this line shifts here so this is for the water now if we do so you see what this last point, sir. Uh, please last part from water yes last part that is 1 to 2 that means it gains the specific volume then specific volume is reduced to 2 to 3 you understand yes. so it is not drawn in scale that means there is a reduction in specific volume then again there is an increase in specific volume because of the heating then again from 4 to 5 only thing is that you will have to consider that from 2 to 3 there is an increase in specific volume but, but, but for water it is a decrease okay now if we draw these diagrams at different pressures, we will be getting the curves like this. And we are not much more interested at the present moment with the solid liquid line, rather the liquid vapor. And you will see if you join all these points. Now, before that, I must tell you one thing. These points, for example, in a particular pressure, constant pressure, what are these points? 2, 3, 4, 5, let us describe. 2 is a point where solid is ready for melting. For example, ice. If I state ice, a simple example I am giving, at one atmospheric pressure I am heating at ice. So, at minus 10 degrees Celsius. Here temperature is not coming. I go on heating, its specific volume increases and its temperature also increases. And when the specific volume attains a value when the temperature is 0 degree Celsius, then solid is ready for transforming into water with addition of heat and a change in the specific volume, which is a reduction in this case. But the temperature will remain constant that is the melting will start this point is known as saturation state this state is saturation state and this state too saturation state with respect to melting similarly when the entire melting will be finished at 3 that means all the ice is now melted at 0 degree celsius water then this state is also saturation state 0 degree celsius water or 0 at 0 degree celsius ice at one atmospheric pressure both are saturation state one is saturation state with respect to melting another is saturation state with respect to solidification, solidification. very good these are the state where this is a un little unstable state that means a little perturbation of heat flux will change its phase you understand these are known as saturation states similarly here if you see in this figure 4 is a saturated liquid state for vaporization Similarly, 5 is a saturated vapor state for liquefaction. liquefaction or condensation. Better you tell condensation. It is a condensation. Liquefaction is all right, but condensation is more popular term is condensation. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 are the saturation states. Not sorry, I am sorry, 2, 3, 4, 5. Not 1, not 6 or not any point within the 2, 3 or beyond the point 5. That means only 2, 3, 4, 5 are the saturation states. So, if we draw these saturation states at different pressure lines, we will see that this locus of the saturation states looks like this. That means, if we follow, we are much more interested on the liquid vapor region. So, the locus of all these four states in PV diagram is very steep, but healing little towards right, increasing specific volume. Whereas, this locus of these five points, that means saturated vapor points are very curvy, that means these are not very steep, much less steep, but this hills in this direction. That means, if you go up, there is a decrease in the specific volume. I am explaining this thing physically. These lines are, therefore, this line is known as saturated solid line, which is the locus of all saturated solid point. Similarly, the locus of all saturated liquid points are known as saturated liquid line. So, this line is the saturated liquid line with respect to solidification. And this line is the saturated liquid line with respect to vaporization. Similarly, this line is the saturated vapor line. And this dome is known as vapor dome. And the beauty is that from the nature's experiment, that the from the nature which we get from experiment that this dome merge, that means this creates a dome, that means the saturated liquid line and saturated vapor line, they merge together and meet at a point C, which is known as the critical point. First of all, this is the observation. Do not immediately ask so much questions. This will take two complete classes to explain all those things. I will 
do, I will see that whether it can be completed this class or not. So, that this is known as critical point just on information and if you see here you will see this joints here there is a straight line which is known as triple point line point is a state you do not confuse verbally that one you are writing point and line together how they can get point cannot be a line, but in science this science physical science or thermodynamics point means is a state that means a triple point state line triple point state point is used as a state there is a particular state critical state. Similarly, triple state critical point means that is not the geometrically point is a state critical state triple state line this is the line. Now, here this is the solid this is the solid vapor line that means if we construct that I will be explaining afterwards a constant pressure line in this zone we will say solid will directly be converted into vapor without going to liquid phase that is known as sublimation this will come afterwards. Now, you see first of all we are not much interested with this solid liquid line we are rather interested mostly in the liquid and vapor line. So, that for an explanation I think it will be better if we concentrate only on the okay, that diagram is not there liquid and vapor zone we disregard this thing. Now, if we do that let us only this liquid and this thing let us consider this as if this is the dome dome and let us uh, draw this line is the liquid line. That means, this is the C, this is the P, this is the V. Now, let us think that we are now only we are <coughs> interested only in the liquid vapor, liquid plus vapor and liquid I am not disregarding the solid part this is vapor. Now, you see this is the point saturated liquid for melting. So, this is the liquid line. So, this is the point that means in our earlier notation this point is the 3 point 3 double dash 3 dash different 3. So, this point is our 4 4 double dash 4 dash 4 double this point is our 5 5 dash 5 double. Now, you see this line is very steep is any question this line is very steep this line is very steep this is the liquid I am discarding the solid part. Why this line is very steep little healing towards this can anybody guess ok I explain what are the difference between these different points these are the saturated states at higher pressure this is the increasing pressure this is P 1 this is P 2 this is P 3. Let us consider a very concrete example this is one atmospheric pressure what is this temperature please tell me what will be the temperature at the point 4 if P 1 is one atmospheric pressure for water. What is that? Please, 100 degree Celsius, 373 Kelvin, ok, 100 degree Celsius. Now, if this pressure P2 is 10 atmospheric pressure, this temperature, what will be this temperature? It will be roughly, we do not know the temperature, it will be more than the 100 degree Celsius. Let us consider the temperature is 150 degree Celsius. That means, all these points correspond to a higher temperature point, because this saturation states at higher pressure where the liquid will convert itself from liquid state to gaseous state will occur at a higher temperature. So, at with the increase in temperature there is a increase in the specific volume of the liquid, but at the same time you can argue that this state point is at a higher pressure. Therefore, the 4 dash 4 double dash. So, as you go on in this direction the point the state points are at higher temperature and higher pressure since liquid is incompressible. So, the influence of pressure on the volume is not being dominated whereas, the influence of temperature on the volume is being dominated which makes a slight heel there. There is a countering effect because of higher pressure volume should be reduced because of higher temperature volume should be more. This the, these two countering effects make this thing is very steep, but little inclined in the right direction. Here just the reverse here the 5 is the saturated vapor that means it is steam at 100 degree Celsius. It is steam at 10 atmospheric pressure, but at 150 degree Celsius. Here steam may be at 20 atmospheric pressure, but the corresponding temperature at which it should condense to liquid may be 200 degree Celsius, but the influence of pressure on steam being much compressible is much more. So, this shows a reduction in the volume because of higher pressure. So, that the locus of the locus of the saturated vapor state point heals much towards the left on this v axis, while this heals little towards the right. 
because of which there is a opportunity that this meets at this point C. So, if I draw a curve like that, one thing I can see that I go on drawing the curve. Okay? Now, we see when we change the state from liquid to vapor, we see if we go on increasing the pressure, what is happening? This temperature is increased, this is not being manifested here. This will be manifested in some other PT diagram, TS diagram. But one thing is that the changes in the specific volume due to phase change is getting reduced. That means, difference between the specific volume of vapor and that of the water is getting reduced slowly, slowly. If we try to boil water at a very high pressure, for example, 100 atmospheric pressure, 100 atmospheric pressure, you will see the specific volume of the saturated water and the specific volume of the saturated vapor, they are very close to each other. In 150 degree, they are very close to each other. So, specific volume changes are becoming lesser and lesser. And if we consider an isobar through the critical point, we see there is virtually no change in the specific volume. That means, you see that saturated liquid and saturated vapor almost have the same specific volume. It is very difficult to distinguish liquid from the vapor. How do you distinguish the liquid from the vapor? Because of the assemblage of the molecules. So, liquids have a much, much lower specific volume than of the gases. The density is higher than the gases. So, that visually we can tell this is a liquid and this is a gas. A very, very rarefied liquid where the densities are very, 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 very high. That means, a, sorry, low. The specific volume is very high. Then, it seems to be the vapor itself, there is no distinction between liquid and vapor. So, therefore, we see that there is no change in the specific volume, virtually the change in the specific volume be, be, between the saturated liquid and vapor phase is going to be diminished. This is the change in the specific volume due to vaporization, this is going to be reduced. So, after this, let us consider the PV diagram finished. I will come back, in, come back to this again. Before that, let me consider a diagram in TS plane. Now, let us see that how can I generate a diagram in T s plane, then I will go to uh, P t 1 by 1 T s plane. Let us now think that we want to draw the T s plane, the same diagram which we did and we do the experiments at a constant pressure. One thing was simple that in P v diagram constant pressure immediately we drew a line which is parallel to this F c sir, because ordinate was P, but here T s diagram constant pressure. That means, if we consider the solid substance a system, solid of given mass and we go on heating, the way we consider, there we observe how the specific volume changes at constant pressure. But here we have to observe how the temperature and entropy change at constant pressure, so that we can draw the locus of the constant pressure line and marking the saturation states. Now, you know at constant pressure, if you add heat reversibly, without any work transfer, we can write first del Q is C P D T and at constant at reversible heat addition, this is T D S is C P D T. That means, we write delta S is C P L N T plus some constant. That means, change in entropy is an logarithmic function. One can write this way, the final minus initial is C P L N T 2 by T 1. That means, you see that as we give on, as we supply heat, the entropy will change, but in a logarithmic manner. Now, when it comes to the saturation states, what happens? They are also at constant pressure, if you give heat, its temperature remains same, but entropy increases, because it gets the heat. That means, there the increase in entropy will be equal to the latent heat by constant temperature, the temperature at which the phase change taking place. So, there will be always a change in temperature, but a change in uh, entropy, but temperature remains constant. So, therefore, if we now draw this, we will see that state 1, if we, this will be a little difficult, okay. So, we get a point like this 2, while this is the solid heating, that is heating of the solid from a state 1 to the saturated state 2, where both temperature and entropy increases according to this relationship. Some qualitative trend I am showing. So, when it reaches the state 2, the, all these states are corresponding to the earlier one as I defined, the nomenclature remaining same. That means, state 2 is the saturated state of the solid. Then it melts, then the entropy changes, but at a constant temperature. That means, this will follow like this until and unless this state 3. Again, 3 to 4 is the sensible heating, both the entropy and uh, temperature changes by this equation. So, some quality, but from 4 to 5 again, there is a large change because 
the entropy it takes huge heat as the latent heat of vaporization. So, there is a huge change in entropy whose value is also equal to the latent heat divided by the temperature, latent heat of vaporization divided by the temperature. So, there again this goes like this. So, therefore, this is the isotherm. So, therefore, by red this is the uh, sorry isobar, I am sorry isotherm isobar, but in this region the isobar and isotherm coincides constant pressure and constant temperature curves remain same. Here you distinctly see that this becomes horizontal line. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 this curve shows a typical isobar in T s plane and see the part of the isobar 2, 3 and 4, 5 shows a constant temperature. This temperature and this temperature are different. For example, water this temperature is 0 degree Celsius and this temperature 4, 5 is 100 degree Celsius. If this way we do the experiments at sorry that means if i draw this to then this is 3 then this is 4 dash similar way i did 5 dash 6 dash at different pressures we arrive at this diagram we arrive at this diagram all right this diagram shows that at uh, these are the constant uh, pressure lines. Now, you see that these are the state points. These are the saturated solid, saturated liquid with respect to uh, solidification, saturated liquid with respect to vaporization, saturated vapor with respect to condensation. So, these red lines are the constant pressure line. This way the constant pressure lines are increasing. Now, here you see just if you discard the solid liquid part, this is the saturated 4 dash 4 double dash saturated liquid state points, the locus they are healing much towards right. This is not much steep as we obtained in PV diagram. So, this way if one draws the PV and TS diagram from his drawing, qualitative drawing, one can understand whether this concept is clear or not. This is much healing. Why? This is because this point and this point having a higher temperature and also having a higher entropy, much higher entropy. For example, in water, this point is at 100 degree Celsius, if this pressure is the one atmospheric pressure. If this pressure is the 150 atmospheric pressure, oh, sorry, oh, uh, one uh, atmosphere, 1.5 atmospheric pressure, then what will happen? This temperature will be little higher. This temperature will be, for example, 150 degree Celsius. So, this temperature is higher and at the same time this absorbs more heat. So, the entropy will be more so that this heals towards right. This point heals the saturated vapor point locus heals towards left as usual because these are at higher pressures and the higher pressures the specific volume of the steam which is a vapor is reduced. So, that that also create a vapor dome meeting at a point C this is the critical point. Now, this is all for today because time is not there. This is almost T S plane. So, next class I will again continue all the diagrams and their comparisons. But one thing uh, the last time probably I do not know whether I uh, uh, by mistake told 150 atmosphere or something like that. This 1.5 atmosphere when we need discuss this uh, uh, figure that let us consider this is an 1 atmospheric pressure. This is 1.5 atmospheric pressure 2 like that. Okay, thank you. Thank you.